One of the hot topics this week at the league meetings, the Thursday night flexing possibility that the commissioner clearly wanted, Peter, and he almost got it with 22 votes, according to Albert Breer of SI.com. So we set this up with some sound we played earlier in the week, and we stripped out the music. We want you to hear it. It's not the best audio, but it's important to hear Giants co-owner John Mara with some very strong views on what it means to the fans to have games go from Thursday to Sunday and Sunday to Thursday. Here he is. Our season ticket holders to people that fill our stadiums every week. Uh, people have gotten used to going from Sunday afternoon to Sunday night. That doesn't mean that they like it. This year, um, we can be flexed to Monday night, which I think is really inconsiderate to our, our ticket holders. But to flex a game back to Thursday night, to me, is just uh, abusive. And I am adamantly opposed to it. Um, I think it, it didn't get, unfortunately, didn't get enough votes uh, today, but it'll probably be revisited in, in May. He's adamantly opposed to it, and it's abusive to the fans. Now, it's also potentially abusive to the players, but that's a different issue that we'll get to. Peter, you and I were talking about this last week. When this all first came up, and I think it was all very carefully orchestrated by the league, a selective leak to Sports Business Journal on Thursday night to get it out there, floating the trial balloon and seeing how people reacted to it. And people reacted to it negatively. So they walked it back a little bit. Well, it would only be one time a year at the most. Well, this, well, that, well. And, and then they tabled it because they knew if they did a formal vote, it was going to get voted down. But again, if Albert's correct, and I have no reason to believe he isn't, they're only two votes away from getting the Thursday night flexing. Meanwhile, they double the number of times that teams can play between Sunday and Thursday, and they hang their hat on this idea that the injury rate's the same if you have Sunday to Sunday as it is if you go Sunday to Thursday. I think that's a selective manipulation of statistics. I think there are more factors that go into play when you talk about players playing with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off and being expected to do it again. But, Peter, they've decided, and the commissioner stood up and said, it's not a health and safety issue. Once you accept that, then why not have seven Thursday night games for a team in a given year after playing on Sunday? There's no limit if you have convinced yourself it's not a health and safety issue. And, uh, you know, sometimes they want what they want and they're going to get it no matter what anyone else says. And I feel like this is one of those, even though John Mara seems to be firmly on our side. Well, you know, Mike, a few things about what you just said. Number one, yes, Albert Breer was absolutely correct. 22 teams were in favor of this. There were two abstentions. Denver and Carolina abstained in this vote. So in other words, there are eight teams against solidly against as of now denver carolina on the fence and 22 teams four now i talked to two of the 22 teams representatives of two of the 22 teams and their attitude was we don't like it really but it's something that the commissioner really thinks is important for a partner and we think that there's a chance over the next couple of years that maybe only one or two games total will get flexed. So we don't think it's worth really fighting for. But the teams that are against it, uh, some of them are really against it, like John Mara is. So I guess I would I would tell you this, Mike, that the other night, one of the funniest kind of ironic things that happened is, so at the league meetings every year for the last X number of years, the Pittsburgh Steelers host a dinner and they host it every year on Tuesday evening at the league meetings. And I've gotten an invitation quite a few times over the, over the years. And so I was at this dinner the other night and in this restaurant, there were two large rooms that you could have uh, big parties and uh, not parties, but you know, big dinners and the New York Giants party was in one of them, and the Pittsburgh Steelers party was in another one. And so the Giants finished dinner earlier and came over, Joe Shane, Brian Dable, 
uh, John Mara, uh, several others came over just to say hi to the people in the Steelers room. And I went up and shook hands with John Mara. And he kind of looked over my shoulder and he saw Roger Goodell was at the Steelers dinner. He's there every year. And he saw Roger and he said, basically, in a light but kind of sardonic way, I better get out of here. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> but but in essence, Mike, in essence, Mike, I think John Mara knew exactly what he was saying. And he knew that it was going to create waves. And you know what? He wanted it to create waves. And quite honestly, I, I happen to be really opposed to this. I think it is, um, it's not cruel and unusual punishment. I don't mean it like that, but it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Do you know how many, I, I've, I've talked this week to a couple of fans who basically uh, come from long distances, one to go see the Bengals every year and one to go see the Cowboys every year. And they travel long distances and they basically said, well, we like to go, both of them like to go later in the year when the games are bigger. And now they said, if we do go, we're going to have to go early in the year in a, in a period where the games can't be flexed because we can't have this huge plan being made. And then later in the year, they say, oh, never mind. The game isn't Sunday. It's now Thursday. I think that's part of it. But I also think to John Mara's point, you already ask your season ticket holders, you say it's about the fans. It's about the fans. It's about the fans. And you know, the fans don't want to hear that it's about Amazon. They don't, they don't care. They don't care at all. But the financial reality in the NFL is that Roger Goodell looks at Amazon and Amazon's happiness is going to be the NFL's happiness because it's very likely that streaming is not only here, but it's here to stay. And so he doesn't want them lagging way behind in TV audiences or streaming audiences. So he's going to do everything he can. In fact, I met an Amazon executive at the meetings on Monday night, and I can tell you Amazon thought that this was absolutely going to happen. And, and I think the league deep down, they're not necessarily, if you asked them on Tuesday, if they were surprised that it didn't pass, I don't think they would have been surprised because they heard so much negative about it. And, you know, I, I kept because I wrote about it last Monday and I said, I think it's a bad idea. And a couple of people said, you, why are you so adamant about this? Why, why are you against it? And I said, because you guys so often discount fans in the stadium and fans who actually come to games. The NFL is such a great television sport that the NFL very often takes for granted the, the they'll say oh no we don't no we don't yes you do if you're talking about moving a game and inconveniencing 50,000 people who would not want a game moved from Sunday to Thursday then how can you just continue in this echo chamber saying it's all about the fans no it isn't about the fans it's about pleasing a partner uh in your media contracts Amazon yeah, football is family. Sorry about screwing up your family trip to Las Vegas for a December game because we moved that game from Sunday to Thursday. And this applies to everyone. This is the problem. Other than the Monday night game that's already locked in in that week, although that game could be flexed to Sunday. But when you put in Monday night flex, Thursday night flex, late season, if you have a ticket to any game – it potentially is affected. The Thursday night game could get moved to Sunday, and any of those Sunday games could go to Thursday or Monday. So it's not about the in-stadium fans. They're choosing the in-home or out-of-home on cell phone device fans who congregate in the millions. I think this is what it comes down to, Peter. You hit the nail on the head. They need to get the numbers of the people who watch the Amazon game live close as they can to the numbers that they were when it was on Fox 
when it was on over-the-air three-letter network because the time is coming where networks fall out, streamers fall in, and it's not going to be 20 million. It's not going to be 30 million. It's going to be a lower number, but they got to get that number as high as they possibly can. That's what this is about. And I also think, Peter, it's about Tuesday, it's about Wednesday, and eventually it's about Friday, and it's about Saturday. I know Friday, Saturday, tougher to pull off because of the antitrust exemption that applies to the broadcast rights, but I feel like if they're determined to get there, they'll get there. And the commissioner is determined. This was a rebuff to him by John Mara. He was smart to get the hell out of there. Because he's the guy, one of the guys, who stood in the way of the commissioner getting what he wants. And we know the commissioner always gets what he wants, and he believes this is good for the game. So why is anybody opposing me on this? And I wonder if it hadn't gotten out last Thursday night, if it would have gotten through, there wouldn't have been a chance for anyone to say, oh, what the hell are you people doing? Without, and I'm not saying it was only us, because it wasn't only us, without the tidal wave of what the hell are you people doing, he may have gotten his 24 votes very quietly, and the first we would have heard about it would have been, when the measure was passed last Monday. You know, Mike, you're, you're absolutely right. I think the NFL thought that we are going to sneak this one up. You know, we're going to throw a fastball by the hitter and we're going to sneak this one in. And it's clear that there were enough people who were angered by this, who basically thought that, even if 95% of our fans come from the local area, which I don't think that's true in any case. Um, and as one of the, one of the teams that is against this told me, you know, imagine all of these people who treat the green Bay Packers game, a trip to Lambeau field as a pilgrimage to make one time in their lives. And they want to go to a beautiful, uh, you know, noon game or or whenever, 3.30 game central time in Green Bay that, you know, a Sunday game with doing the tailgate, everything like that. Just imagine two weeks beforehand hearing that, you know, the Packers Bears game, uh, which you're going to go to, which, you know, thousands of people every year use that Green Bay, a trip to Green Bay as a pilgrimage. And just imagine that that game then gets flexed, you know, to Thursday night. And I think the big question is, I know this is going to sound crazy. I mean, this really is going to sound crazy. But I think that that if I were a fan and this happened, I would be as loud as I could. I would protest as much as I could. And I would call the NFL for what it's being in this particular case which is greedy. And I would basically ask just plaintively, why in the world shouldn't I get a refund for the NFL? I, in good faith and good conscience, bought plane tickets. I bought tickets to this game that now I can no longer use. I live in Santa Monica, California. How possibly can I take three days off from work to go to a football game. Maybe if you're independently wealthy, you can. But this all it, it, all together was about one thing, and that is going to see the team that I've always loved, and now you've made it impossible because I can't take three days off from work in the middle of a week to make this happen. So I, I believe, honestly, Mike, that that – this is one time where I hope, I really hope that fans and players, social media, wherever, just rise up and say, we're not going to take it. I don't sense it's going to rise to that level of groundswell. And for that, I'm unhappy. But I do think that this, even though, because there's only two teams now that they need to either get off the fence of, of, of abstention, Denver and Carolina, or two of the remaining eight uh, who voted that voted against it, uh, I don't sense it's going to rise to the level of outrage that it won't pass. I think it probably will pass. But I wish that the outraged people would speak up, because if you don't speak up now, you'll forever hold your peace.
Yeah. Hey, Denver, how would you like to host a draft? Hey, Carolina, how would you like to host a draft? I mean, we know how backroom deals get made. We know that they're in a position of strength. Now, they are now the Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin of the NFL ownership <laughs> where they have power, right? Am I wrong? Yeah. We know, we, we know how it works. And here's the other thing, too, Peter. Anybody who stands up and says this is wrong and it shouldn't happen is going to piss off the commissioner and have to deal with him, whether it's somebody on the inside like John Mara or whether it's somebody on the outside like us. And we know he gets that look. He gets that, he gets that look in his eyes when he ain't happy. And we know that look. Jim Trotter knows that look. We, and, and so if you're going to stand up to this, if you're going to push back, there's going to be a price to pay. But I agree with you. It's something that is wrong for the fans. It's wrong for the players. It's wrong for the game. I understand it's right for the money, but sometimes the money's got to take a back seat. Sometimes, as we said last week, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.